welcome back to real time digital signal processing lab. So, today we will discuss about uh, DFT and FFT whatever we have covered in theory. So, we will see first in MATLAB then we will uh, go to the uh, DSP processor board and then see how we are going to run our code today. So, first we will consider the MATLAB uh, uh, thing. So, this example as I was uh, mentioning about the filters. So, this is from the book uh, Welch Wright and then Morrow. So, you will be seeing that real time digital signal processing book uh, published in 2005. There was an M file which uh, shows that how the windows can be generated uh, and then the filter responses for different kind of windows what we can see it. So, we will be applying one of the window for our uh, DFT or FFT to remove the noise and then see that how they will be represented in the frequency domain. So, here the number of inputs what it is chosen is 128 and then alpha for uh, KZ window is chosen as 3 and then number of FFT points chosen as 1024 into 8 and then the sampling frequency in this case chosen as 48000. And then you will be uh, representing that is line type control for the plot and then you will be setting the font size in the plot of MATLAB. So, first one will be calculating Barlet window with the n points and then Hamming window, rectangular window and then the case of window. So, we have to pass the alpha parameters which can be variable. So, you can uh, select them as we have seen in uh, filter design toolbox. So, you can generate this. Then you will be uh, computing their frequency response. We call it as frequency z basically. So, you will be uh, calculating uh, for the uh, that is H 3 what you have seen the thing W 3 by sum of uh, W 3 what you will be putting it and then the sampling frequency what you will uh, generate. And then the frequency response for uh, H 2 is shown that uh, with this parameters and you will be outputting the uh, figures actually. So, you will be plotting W 3 that is subplot what we will be having it and then font size line width what it is shown and all the four figures what it will be plotted. So, with uh, different colors and then later on you will be seeing that subplot uh, what you are going to calculate that is uh, P 3 what it is chosen and then you will be uh, finding these are the plot parameters one can go through you will be getting um, help file in MATLAB and then uh, you will be uh, calc all these are the subplot. So, you will be seeing that uh, you will be calculating a uh, Hamming window what it is going to be used and then its frequency after passing your uh, data through that what you will be seeing it. So, we will run and then see how we are going to get the output. So, you can see the thing uh, you will be seeing the first the figure we will look at it. So, you will be seeing that this is a rectangular window and you will be seeing with the pink as a KZ window with alpha is equal to 3 what it has been selected and then Hamming window and this is the Barlet window what you are seeing it is just like a triangular and then this is a rectangular and then the other two represent your smooth response. So, the second figure we will see what has happened. So, you will be seeing that in this you have passed through the rectangular window and then you are seeing the frequency response of after passing through the rectangular window. And then you will be seeing uh, using the Hamming window. So, how the output is going to be represented. So, you will be seeing that this is our main lobe, this is a low pass filter basically and then these are the side lobes. So, you will be seeing that rectangular window you will be seeing it is has a main lobe is very narrow compared to your uh, Hamming window 
or, or any other window what you can take the thing and you will be seeing the ripple somewhere in minus 14 dB or something like that what they have come down and then finally, it will be settling down to 21 dB or so. Whereas, in the case of your Hamming window, this is a smooth response what you are having with your input signal. So, the main lobe is little bit increased and then you will be seeing your uh, side lobes have come down approximately what we can take it as minus 40, 40 or 41 dB. So, this shows that how our uh, uh, filter helps in uh, having the main lobe and then side lobe required for your application what you can select one of the uh, windows basically designing with windows. So, we will uh, close this and then we will go to the DFT basically. So, here what we have is uh, uh, usually we ask the students to uh, run uh, DFT, FFT and then overlap add and save method. So, we will demonstrate today uh, up to uh, this thing. Okay. We will go with the DFT, FFT uh, editor because uh, I can split the windows or editor can be in one of the thing. So, here uh, we will maximize on the editor so that you can see the codes what it has been written. So, initially we use the clear all. So, you should be calling back the theory. So, we did uh, the circular convolution using DFT properties. So, we will be using uh, in this case FFT to run our uh, circular convolution. One of the way of doing it is I can put a break point because the continuous code is running. So, I will be uh, setting the uh, break point here. So, that we will be seeing one after the other. So, first one is a circular convolution using FFT as you can see that x has the value 1, 2, 3, 4 and then h is 1, 0, 1, 1. So, this example we uh, manually worked it out. Now, we will see MATLAB how it is going to compute. So, we will be first what we are doing convolution usually uh, direct convolution as we have done it earlier. Now, using FFT how we are going to do the circular convolution we look at it. So, first what we do is x k is our FFT of x and then h k is FFT of h what we will be taking it and in the frequency domain we know that y k is going to be represented by a uh, direct multiplication of h k into um, x k. So, that is uh, r as you can see y k is equal to x k into h k or h k into uh, x k. Then what we will be doing is I can take the inverse f f t of the y k and compute and display circular convolution result. So, then accordingly we can do the linear convolution. So, how it is going to uh, what are the values we are going to get it through a linear convolution is given by this equation. Now, uh, what is it L y linear uh, y output what we will be getting it. So, the convolve is the, the command prompt in MATLAB. So, you can one can use it x comma h. So, it will be computing and display linear convolution uh, results. So, we will uh, run this code uh, since I have put the break point till here what it will be running. So, you you can check the think results uh, it will be displayed on the command window. So, I have to bring it down. So, you can see that as uh, uh, the convolution of circular convolution of uh, 1 2 3 4 and 1 0 1 1 what we got the result was 6 9 8 7 in the theory. So, you are seeing using the MATLAB it was asked for you to verify with MATLAB whether you are going to get the same thing. And then the linear convolution what you can see is it is 1 2 4 7 5 7 4 what we got it. So, that we will be seeing that is direct convolution what it has been done. So, using the convolution whether we can do the linear convolution that that is what the example we worked it out. So, here you will be see, seeing that 
linear convolution by zero padding in the MATLAB code what we had has been written. So, you will be 1 2 3 4 and you will be we have added uh, 1 2 4 zeros. So, this is zeros 1 2 4. So, it will be generating 1 2 3 4 4 zeros followed by and then the same way with hz also 4 zeros what it has been added. Now, you will be doing the DFT of or FFT uh, computation basically of our xz and then hz. Then we multiply in the uh, frequency domain both of it. Okay. So, why we can take the i f f t of i of t and then we will be getting the results. So, just to show that I can put the break point and then see that what our output is going to be. So, we will continue the running. So, we will see that the results are displayed here. So, you can see that what was the thing? Uh, the previous one we had 1247574 and then y is the what we have uh, got the output with linear convolution and using FFT. So, you will be seeing that it is 1.0, 2.0 and then so on the last one is minus 0 because we added 1 extra 0 in the thing uh, because L plus M minus 1 as we know about it. So, it has to be 7. So, till there what you will have it rest of them are zeros by doing the 0 padding. So, we will go back to uh, the next uh, this thing. So, I can maximize when I want to show you the results. So, we will uh, reduce it and then go back. Now, what is it? So, we will calculate the amplitude spectrum of sine wave using FFT and then display it. So, uh, here uh, our uh, this thing uh, is uh, uh, number of samples that is 256, we call it a sampling rate and then uh, sine wave frequency what chosen is 50 basically hertz and number of points chosen is 120. So, this up to 128 points 0 to n minus 1. So, you will be calculating sin of 2 pi f by f s into n. So, that is how we will be getting our x n samples in input sample. Then we can calculate x of k that is f f t of x of n comma n number of points and then we will be plotting the absolute value of x k because we know that it is a complex conjugate what we will be getting it. Only the amplitude what I want to have the thing. So, we will be taking the um, absolute of x of k which gives us the plot the amplitude spectrum alone and then this is going to give us the magnitude spectrum. So, for the axis is going to represent 1 to 64 show only up to points f s by 2. So, in this case uh, what we have is uh, 128 points which represents up to 2 uh, pi or f s values. So, you will be labeling. So, what we will do is we will put a break point again. So, I have to go down and then the uh, select a break point here. So, we will set the enable the break point here. So, you will be seeing where next uh, the computation is going to happen, we will have the break point. So, we can continue if this is to avoid multiple uh, files all the uh, codes have been incorporated in one. So, you will be seeing that this is the uh, for up to 64 samples what you have it. So, uh, what we have is uh, f is equal to 50. So, you will be seeing the magnitude whatever uh, you are going to get the thing and then the frequency index you will be seeing that it is at approximately 25. So, what you are uh, uh, having the frequency at k is equal to 25. So, can you compute and then uh, look at it whether you are getting the frequency as 50 hertz. 
how it is going to be. So, you have to multiply it by 2 which you will be getting it as 50 hertz. Okay. So, now uh, the next one is uh, compute and display amplitude spectra at 2 sine waves. So, how we are going to do this? We hold on for a while. So, we will set the break point here also. So, you know that next break point is set. So, what we are going to do here? So, again our sampling frequency we have chosen as 256 sampling rate and sine wave frequency is 50 hertz and number of points what we have chosen is 128 and uh, we will be calculating sine of the thing 50 hertz sine wave. So, we will be doing the FFT of uh, this one and then calculate our uh, this thing uh, magnitude. So, uh, this is what, what we did the thing. So, the next one is we will see that uh, amplitude spectra 2 sine waves what is going to happen. So, uh, we will put a next break point it has already selected. So, it is the same thing. So, what you have is the first frequency uh, is 50, f 1 is 61 frequency of first sine wave and then second sine wave what it has been chosen and you will be calculating x n is a sine 2 pi f by f s into n and then x 1 of n will be 2 star pi f 1 by f s into n. So, generate 61 hertz, generate 50 hertz then take x k is equal to f f t of the first input signal and x 1 k is of f f t of x 1 comma n basically second sine wave and then calculate their magnitude spectrum first sine wave and the second sine wave magnitude spectrum and then plot them uh, with n values which is uh, varying between 0 to 127. So, you will be uh, only representing 1 to 64. So, when we run this you will be seeing that how the two of them look like. So, you are seeing this is a multiple as you can see this is you will be seeing at uh, 50 hertz and this should be at 31. So, you can see that approximately x is there 30 little bit movement uh, will give select 31. So, that is uh, uh, what you are uh, why magnitude is uh, uh, 40.7109 what you will be seeing it and you will be seeing this if I we put the thing x is 25 and then y is 64. So, you will be seeing that approximately you will be getting between 60 to 61 what you are seeing the thing which is uh, uh, 61 hertz sine wave generated whereas, your peak is at 25 for your uh, 50 hertz signal as because we are representing with 64 samples in the thing pi by 2 what we have done the thing. Okay. So, this is how we are uh, uh, frequency spectrum and other things work. So, the next one is uh, we are going to uh, see that overlap of two spectral lines due to frequency separation is less than frequency resolution. So, how we have defined our uh, frequency resolution? It is f s by n what we have taken the thing. So, you have uh, 256 here again n is 128 and f 1 in this case sampling frequency is uh, sorry uh, the frequency that has to be passed first sine wave is 60 the next one is 61. So, compared to the previous one. So, we have one hertz difference. So, we will see the resolution how it is going to be represented. Then we will be calculating x in and then x 2 n generate 60 hertz and then 61 hertz as usual previous. Then add them up and take the f f t of x in that is mix these two sine waves and take the d f t computation find the magnitude response and then plot. So, we will be checking the break point again. So, we will set the 
enable the break, uh, break point in the next stage and then we will run this. So, uh, I think we will expand this you will be seeing the combined spectra. Sorry. almost uh, they are overlapping you are unable to see even the expansion of it. So, you can uh, reduce the thing. So, approximately it shows at 30 your combined frequency response. So, your resolution what you are going to see is very uh, this thing small in this case. So, we may have to increase uh, number of samples. So, what we can do is I can uh, sample at uh, uh, this thing what we will call it as uh, 1024 we can modify this sorry 1024 and whether number of points whether I can increase it to 256 we will see the thing and then we will rerun the code again. Uh, actually it has gone off to further ok we will clear uh, all the brick points and now we will put the brick point here and the next brick point will be in the next place. She had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. Okay, so uh, one second, clear all. We'll. Uh, I'll break the thing so that we can uh, restart it because it has gone into the end. So, we will come back and then uh, run that portion. So, I have to put the break point now where uh, we are calculating uh, here f is we had given it as uh, enable the break point here and then again we will enable the break point here. So, it has come to this. So, you can see that it uh, the previous one what uh, we are seeing it as the output. So, now I have to run it again because it is pointing to here we will continue the thing. So, now you will be seeing that all the sorry it has been mapped to only 64 points. So, it will be little shifted you may have to multiply still you will be seeing that the peak has gone up to 200 and odd. So, whether we can expand it. So, you will be seeing that 60 and 61 almost has got merged in this that is what, what we call it as uh, frequency resolution which uh, we are unable to look into the thing. So, now what is it how we are going to uh, compare our rectangular and Kaiser windows for spectral analysis. So, the next example. So, here the sampling frequency is 256 and we have n is equal to 128 points that is what it says sampling rate and then signal length and then the frequency uh, uh, selected is 61 that is sine wave what we are going to generate it and then beta value in this case is selected as 8.96 and then the we are going to use instead of alpha we will be selecting beta in this case uh, w n kaiser n comma beta 
we will be applying it and then we are going to do the normalize the gain against again as rectangular window and then rectangular windowed spectrum what we will be uh, calculating absolute of that and the other one is uh, we will be calculating Kaiser windowed spectrum from that that is normal g into absolute of x l k and then we will try to plot the thing. So, here we will put again the uh, break point so that uh, we will not spill over. Okay. So, we will run and then see what will be the frequency and then uh, magnitude what we will be getting it. So, you can see that uh, what is the uh, the first one what we have it here is uh, um, absolute of x k. So, that means to say uh, which is the window you are going to have it rectangular window here and then this is my rectangular window and this is the Kaiser window what it is representing. So, with the beta uh, uh, selection so, we will be having the response of the Kaiser window as this way. So, we you will be seeing that the almost equivalent to rectangular window the main uh, lobe what you will be selecting it. So, you will be seeing your frequency will be approximately 61 hertz both of them are passing with both rectangular and then Kaiser window. So, we will see uh, how to find the power spectral density of two sine waves embedded in a random noise. So, you can generate a random noise that is initialized random signal generator. So, and then your yeah, sampling frequency what you have chosen as 1 kilohertz and then uh, you will be having generate f s by 10 is you will be seeing that 100 samples of uh, the every one point what you will be sele selecting get and you have been given what is it amplitude of two sine waves that is 1 and then 2 which is 150 and 140 frequencies of sine waves and then amplitude of the first sine wave is 1 second sine wave is 2. So, generate x n with a sin 2 star pi f star t plus 0.1 times the random value what you will be adding with your signal. Then you will be calculating your uh, spectrum and uh, uh, periodogram. Okay. So, that is what uh, uh, the next assignment or uh, lab portion of it will again enable the break points here. So, we will run it and then you will be seeing the spectral density here. So, uh, that is what your power spectral density. So, what we had was uh, uh, two frequencies 150 and then 140. So, you will be seeing that this is approximately 140 and this is approximately 150. Uh, 4 or something approximate what you have the thing and you will be seeing that how your side loops are buried in your noise what you are seeing it fine. So, the next one is whether we can play and compute a spectrogram of speech file in this case. So, um, Okay. Next, uh, we will put the uh, this thing. Uh, in this case, you have a, a speech file sampled at 8 kilohertz, you can record it using MATLAB and number of bits chosen is 16 bits in this case and sound AC is play the speech signal and then you can find its spectrogram using uh, the function spec, uh, spectrogram. Okay. So, we will see that first and then we will look at it. 
hopefully you have heard the thing. This is the speech spectrogram what you will be seeing it. So, you will be seeing that your power of frequency uh, 0 dB per hertz what it is shown. So, these are the 50 hertz and this is frequency in kilohertz what it is marked. So, most of the speech signal as we say that it is going to be up to 3.1 kilohertz. So, that is the reason why the or maximum 4 kilohertz that is why the sampling frequency is chosen as 8 kilohertz and time duration in seconds this, this is the 3 second. So, uh, this is how you can generate your sign uh, uh, this thing speech signal and see its spectrogram. So, now what we will do is uh, we will uh, uh, overlap add techniques for fast convolution what we are going to use it this theory uh, we will be covering it uh, in the, uh, the how to do this fast convolution will be covered in the theory and then how to implement FIR filter that attenuate this whatever uh, 1 kilohertz sine wave tonal noise speech file. So, what is it? So, you will be using the same speech file and then sampling rate is chosen as 8 kilohertz. So, first we will be playing the original speech signal, then a uh, pure uh, that is what uh, speech is played. Then what you are going to do is you are going to generate a 1 kilohertz sine wave which is called uh, omega 2 star pi into f by f s frequency of sine wave. So, you have uh, done the thing and you will be merging with your uh, speech signal that is what, what we call it as corrupt switch by 1 kilohertz sine wave and then you can hear that corrupt voice and then uh, you uh, we can uh, display the spectrogram of noisy speech and then later on we will be applying a window technique that is a passband filter. 900 to 1100 uh, f s by 2 is uh, 4000 in this case what we have given and apply f i r 1 filter with stop band that design in uh, f i r filter to stop the frequency uh, this is a band stop filters uh, what uh, it is not band pass it is a band stop 900 to 1100. So, we want to eliminate 1000 hertz. So, that is why it is a stop band filter what it is designed and then you will be passing this coefficient B coefficient through your FFT filter that is FIR filtering using overlap add method is being used here. So, that it is a continuous signal or input signal what you have it. So, you would not be able to take the complete FFT. So, part by part what it will be done uh, done actually in the overlap. Uh, method add method is being used. So, we have the overlap save method also one of them can be used here overlap add method is going to be uh, demonstrated. So, you will be displaying the spectrogram of the filter speech and then you will be hearing your output. So, we will run to the end. She had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. So, that was the original. So, we will give a. She had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. So, you are seeing 1 kilohertz sine wave is overlapped with the speech signal. Clearly, you can see that this is a noisy signal. So, we will go back and then press the uh, this thing. She had your dark suit in greasy wash water all year. Although you faintly see the 1 kilohertz, but still in the speech you are unable to hear the sine wave. So, this is a filtered output what you have got it. So, this shows that how uh, uh, our discrete Fourier transform is computed using F50 method to implement for different applications. It can be circular convolution, linear convolution or you want to eliminate your uh, noise from the speech using the filtering technique. So, we can uh, do it in the frequency domain. Thank you.